Doodle butt. The Pilot Vanishing Point is a super popular pen, not only because it goes clicky clicky and there's not many pens that do that, also has a gold nib. And for many folks, this is their very first gold nib pen, but I didn't go about getting a Vanishing Point the regular way. It just didn't initially appeal to me, so I never got one. I didn't really intend to, but then Mahjong came out with their A1, which of course, <laughs> They took the design off the original Pilot Vanishing Point, but I thought, whatever, for the 30 some odd bucks Canadian, let's pick one up. And I did, and then pretty quickly I realized this is actually super handy, very comfortable, writes well. They had the clipless version, so they got rid of the clip. Some people don't like that. So instead here on the back of the body, they just have a roll stop, so no clip. Hey, not a bad idea. I haven't seen Pilot do that. I got some of these other ones here for a review. Those are the two I bought. Then I was sent these for review with some more stylized bodies. This is my personal favorite one. This is sort of a newer release with the fish scale. The grip just feels great. And this thing looks mega sharp. But the whole time, what I was really longing for when it came to Pilot was a vintage vanishing point this is or sometimes they'll call them capless as well but this is an older one and the main reason is that clip that one piece it just looks so sleek and i'm like why don't they still do this and i've been looking for years you can see the video on this pen found it in an auction great price picked it up and this is my favorite of the bunch it just feels great the nib is wonderful and it is much lighter, it's, it is more comfortable. I have a big hand and I usually prefer thicker pens, sometimes a little bit heavier, but this is a mega comfortable pen and a joy to use. But what's really neat is, you know, if you're gonna copy, just do it and they have. So Mahjong now has the A2. These are tough to come by and are quite pricey. So you might not find one, especially, you know, especially depending on your budget, this one that you can afford too. So they did something again the pilot wouldn't do, like eliminate the clip over there. That's a great idea. They brought back the old style. Now it is different. It's not a one piece clip. I got two models here. You can see a little better with the chrome there. So it's not a one piece clip like on the original. It's not as slick. It's a two piece. But the fact they brought it back, it has a different number of facets. I'm going to compare it and all that stuff. But they brought back this style, the faceted body. And it's a little bit slimmer, lighter, of course. I really do enjoy the vintage type style. So let's check out this Mahjong A2. I have two of them here. They got black trim and chrome trim. These were sent to me by 365 Day Stationery. They're a store that's on uh, AliExpress. So check out the, the details. They'll be down in the description there. They have pretty good uh, wide offering of pens. So I've been using these for a few weeks. I have found some differences. So let's just get into that. So when it comes to the best writing pens, the proper pilot ones, new and old, uh, I can immediately tell a difference. But these have been really, really good. The A1s, all of mine have been performing quite well, pretty smooth. Um, this one here is just a touch scratcher. You can, you know, if you have four, you're going to feel that one is going to be better than, than the rest and one will be worse than the rest. So this would be like number one. I don't know where those other ones lie, but this would be number four. But they all are quite good. And I have, you know, I read, I read your comments as best I can. I can't reply to them all. I'm in mean, little threads here and there and Reddit. I check out sometimes as well. And some folks have just said, you know, they really haven't liked the nibs. Theirs are quite scratchy, not so great. And of course that, that, you know, that's going to happen. I don't know if it has to do with the A2, but both of these are a little bit more scratchy. I'll show you what the nibs look like. They're not aligned properly. It's they they are definitely off. So I'll get you under the microscope. There's no way you're going to be able to see this with this camera, but uh, yeah, it's a, such a tiny little nib. They still do write, but they are not as smooth, a little bit scratchy. These nibs do need a bit of a tune up. I'm not going to be able to do it in the video because just, I mean, let's have a look at this. Let's show you how small these nibs are and how big my hands are. And if I try to do anything, it's just going to cover up and you're not going to see anything. So um, check out some of my other videos for nib tuning. But they do perform well as far as dry out. Everything else goes. Just these nibs need a bit of a touch up. So let's run through these and I'll bring out the vintage one. To compare but let's just run through these real quick i'll use the yellow one here but just for contrast a little bit easier to see things they got a whole wide range of colors again which is quite nice um, on here as you can see we got a plastic 
body injection molded plastic body and a terrible focus there now you can see it we've got some brass bits that are coated these get press fit into there you can see how they go in there might be adhesive but it's most likely just a press fit down in there you got your spring as with the other units as well you got your whole nib assembly just like on a proper pilot slips in there and just like on the a1s this should be sitting down in there so they could change that spring a little bit although this would be lower which would mess that up so what really needs to happen is that notch needs to be further down on this whole body but uh i don't really see them ever fixing that to be i'm gonna i'm gonna complain about it on every one of them that i review but i don't think they'll ever actually change it so that's i think that's a permanent feature that make <laughs> makes it different but yeah you're right you can it's supposed to go in there anyway it's not a big deal one thing that is nice on here so you can see there is a nice little chamfer on those threads so well let's just get it out now on my vintage one when i got it i absolutely love this was so excited writes wonderfully all that great stuff Oh, a little bit of ink came out of there. But I did make a separate video on this because there is no chamfer on here. It's all actually just burrs. And I said, if you have one of these, you need to take care of this because it's going to damage uh, the pen body. It'll crack. It's, it's, it's happened to other folks. I've heard of that happening with these vintage ones. So I did a quick little video. If you have one of these, want to check it out. It just, it's a few minutes to do it and it smooths it. But here we go on the new one, the uh, Mahjong version, the A2. They have that chamfer there, so they've broken that edge, and when you go to screw in the body, now i got ink all over the place, uh, it's smooth. I don't feel any grindy-grindy like I did on my uh, my Vintage Pilot over there, so that's a nice little touch. Got the clicker buttons on all the Mahjong models, the A1s and the A2s over here, so it's the exact same part. That'd be silly to change it, whether you get the dark, the black finish there, or the chrome one, but nice little dome on the top. On the proper pilot there on the left, it's more of a flat profile, but it does look you know, similar as far as dimensions go. You can see here as well, uh, just these little notches here on the injection molding on the body. They pretty much did it the same. Slight little difference, but almost identical on the vintage one as it is on the Mahjong. Where we start to get different down here, uh, obviously is on the clip, same style clip that they have on the other version. Let's bring it up here as well. Oh, actually, no, it is different. Okay, yep, yeah, that is different. So the clip here on the A1 model is identical pretty much to the pilot. Slight little more hourglass shape on the bottom, but they yeah, they didn't use the same clip. So that's actually very, very interesting. It's it's more aligned to the vintage one little slimmer, little th uh, little sleeker. I do like that about the the vintage here, the Pilot one. I find the clip, it kind of, I don't like that bulge they have on there. It just doesn't kind of fit as nice. It does get in the way more. So again, if <laughs> they're just taking design cues off the original, uh, but they went with a sleeker clip, a little bit shorter, and again, two piece versus the super sexy one piece. Someone's going to ask, so I might as well do it. A little bit of uh, blasphemy here. We're gonna take the Mahjong A2, put it into the vintage pilot. I feel dirty already. And we will put the pilot nib assembly into the Mahjong or Majan as I always call it. Let's, yeah, it fits. Let's go click, yep. As I did the nib swap, it's actually not the notch here on the body. It is the spring or at least the position of the spring within the body. So this is the uh, Mahjong A2 going into the pilot and it sits down there. So yeah, I just held them side by side to compare here and dimensionally, though there we go, they're lined up. You can see those notches are in the right spot. So this the fix is even simpler. You know, I thought you could do it with the spring, but, uh, you know, just putting it in there, it kind of led me astray. But yeah, that's all they got to do is change uh, the depth of the spring where it sits in there or the spring itself. They don't even have to change the machine that's stamping all that stuff out. So super simple fix. They, they should just do that. One thing with the, uh, as it says here, Moon Man uh, or Mahjong is the nib units. These only come, I think it's only an extra fine right now. If, you know, it would be cool if they did more nib options with that, but whatever it is, what it is, you can see no breather hole here. You have a breather hole. Profiles are almost identical. 
Here we have some notches, there it's solid. Let me show you the modern one and tell you why those notches exist. So here we have original vintage, original modern, and the copy. So why do we, you know, they copy the modern version, obviously. So why do they go from the solid to the notches? Well, what that does is it saves you a teeny, teeny little bit of gold. And if you run that iteration, it's just tens and tens of thousands of times over and over, over decades, that actually saves you a tiny little bit of money. You don't need to do it really with steel because the cost savings is ridiculous. It's still ultra tiny here. But yeah, they, uh, that's why they went from solid there to little tiny notches there. I feel that since it's such a key feature on the capless or vanishing point, let's have a bit of an old fashioned click off. Let's start with the vintage. Okay, the new, okay, new is smoother. It's also brass, so it does feel more solid, but it is a, it is a better click. They have improved the click over time. Let's compare the A1. Okay, I would say the A1 is a better click than the Vintage. It works well, it's just, uh, I think the spring's a little too firm. That does feel better. The A2, however, it's sort of in between. It, um, I don't have this with the A1s, but on both of these A2s, when you click it, you feel it right there. It sort of just catches a little bit. So there's a click, before it clicks, you just feel a little bit of a catch and then it goes. So yeah, I don't know what's quite different with this, how the spring possibly sits inside the body there. Um, just something to do with the mechanism. It is different on the A2 versus the A1. So don't worry, I know we are gonna take the spring out of the proper vanishing point and compare that to the Mahjong. Don't worry, I'm gonna do it. Here we go, let's pop these out and let's get to the bottom of this. Oh yeah, man, there you go. Like, come on. The answer is right in front of you. Just, <laughs> come on, guys. Look, I'll put the crap spring in the good pen. It doesn't even matter which nib unit because you're the same. See, just, just do this. They probably got whatever spring that is, a mega cheap. God. That's all you got to do. I will, you know, someone's going to ask me, where can I source one of those? I don't know. If I come across one, I'll make an update. But that's that's all they got to do to fix that. That drives me bonkers. So if that problem still exists, let's say a year from now, you know, they just really don't care. I'll do a really quick writing sample with these pens. I've written with the A1s a bunch. They work well. Everything's good, but I will give you more of a close up of these two particular nibs. This is, it doesn't, I don't think it's just the A2. This could probably happen in the A1 as well. I've heard people say that too, but I'll compare the nib units on these ones versus the A1, but let's write real quick. I figure that's good enough for what we're doing. This one here in yellow writes the better of the two compared to the one here I have in the green. I'll get out the microscope, show you those nib units, but let's just give you one final little look here before we shut things down and get microscopic. So if you are checking these out online and go to the 365 day stationary store, you'll see lots of colors. If you don't know which one's for you, or I think you can do all the pens on either chrome or black. So. If this helps you with your decision process, there's a few little close-ups, but uh, let's get really close up now. Figured we would start off vintage. So this is my vintage Pilot Vanishing Point. Now we have the smoothest writing of my A1s. This is one of the A2s. Now it actually doesn't look that bad. Sometimes it's tricky. The What I'm using here has a little ring light on it. Uh, this is the yellow one, so it's a little better. And finally, here's the bum nib, and you can sort of see why. We got a few things going on, misaligned. Looks like we have some canyoning, so it's wider at the bottom than it is at the top. Um, yeah, I might be able to just align that, but I'm looking at this now, and I'm thinking, you know, I have a bunch of these pens with a bunch of all the same nibs. This would be a fun little thing to grind. I could maybe do a little extra fine cursive italic on this. There's a little bit of meat there. I don't know if I could do an architect on that one. I'll have to look at this more. Maybe that would be tough. 
but I think I could at least do a cursive italic on there. Let me know. I think I know the answer, but in the comments, if you want to see me grind one of these little bad boys, this would be the one to do because we already got some issues going on. Okay, I had to go full nerd. I couldn't help myself because I started thinking about, well, what's different with the spring? So we saw the length. So this is off of the Mahjong version. This is the modern Pilot. And this is the vintage one. So this is actually interesting. Like the lengths are the same as you can see. This is the top of the spring, but there's this little collar here. Looks, yeah, that just threads on. So they used to have that. I'm not going to mess with it and potentially damage the spring, but you can see it, it coils onto there. There's a little thread action going on. So this is what they had back in the day. They've adjusted it and modified it to what it is now. Probably, I don't know if that's just straight cost savings that they did in the adjustment, but you can see, um, yeah, there's a, a couple extra coils at the bottom, but they have more at the top. I don't really know. I'm not a spring expert at all. I have really no experience with that. On the Mahjong one, it's exactly the same top and bottom. Obviously, it's, it's too long. The wire gauge looks identical, like really, really the same. What it is, is there's just someone, a pilot, there's a designer, an engineer, whoever, who just, they just know more about springs and getting a spring just right. I think I went deep enough on these and uh, satisfied all my own personal curiosities. Let's get back to the final verdict on the A2. Is it better than the A1? Well, there, that's a personal preference. Mine are all in bits now all over the desk here. I got to find out what goes with what, but I do prefer the the just the weight and the dimensions more of the a2 over the a1 and i do prefer now it's uh, not all put together my vintage pilot vanishing point the most of all the ones i have the the modern ones and the vintage and the knockoff ones this one here still reigns supreme oh one little thing if you probably didn't see it already but you can see the number of facets is different they are they're fewer and bigger these ones are smaller and more plentiful, but yeah, I, I really do think I like this design more and pilot. If, if Majan is doing this, why don't you guys do this stuff? You do all sorts of versions of your regular vanishing points. Uh, also you have the decimo, which is thinner. Just bring, bring back the old school. You, you don't even have to do the one piece clip. There's probably obviously some reasons you stopped doing it. It'd be cool if you brought it back, but they're kind of beating you at your own game. So you're the masters of the vanishing point. Should, you know, bring this back. They should release a modern version of their old version and uh, show everybody who's the boss of this stuff as well. But anyways, I just, the spring, where did it go? Can't lose that. Let's wrap it up before I lose some other parts here. <laughs> anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. You know, comments, likes, hit subscribe, please. We'll catch you next time.